consciousness identifying a common purpose. That's what it's literally is all about. So this is who we are. That's why some people start commenting uh, from outside of the party about leadership challenges which we don't know about. And they start being spokespersons of people within the party, seasoned cadres of the party. They don't require spokespersons from outside of the party, like I'm not saying now, or I'm not Jim Kunan. Rather than Sangam, Sakura Tia State in Sangam, we know each other since we were young. We don't need a spokesman from outside. Because I that nobody is going to phone, can I tell you bribe for weekend? Because Taka Bakuri, we were together through battle, through thick and thin, through training, through political education, uh, through all this, you know, in our, as young people. We do not need spokespersons from outside of our party. Particularly young upstarts, we are going to make a pamuno, we are starting to go now to undo a jagger for hope. How did they want to become spokespersons for a party of seasoned revolutionaries? It's not, we don't countenance that. So we hear rumblings from people who are outside of the party, but we never hear of it within the party because we know each other. And we, we, we have a focus, we have a goal, and it's been shared now for more than six decades. And it has got so many people who, call, who perished along the way. So, don't speak about, if you have no party of yours to speak about, go and sleep. Eh, don't try to become a spokesperson of a party which is not yours. And that's it, I'm there, the spokesperson of the PF. In what is here, I will just see, we don't know, we don't I speak on behalf of the PF, and the president knows about it. So please, please, the nigga and Jim Kunaga spray as they can't the nonsense about trying to speak on behalf of people within Zanu PF. I speak on their behalf. And I have not heard anything about what they are talking about. So anyway, back to our Congress, it will be an important uh, event. And we are looking, the registration is already going on. Uh, the structures are in place. and. The people are enthusiastic about coming to the conference. We are coming out of COVID. There's still a lingering fear of COVID. The last time we had our conference, we had to do it virtual because we were afraid of COVID. So as a balance, we have reduced the number of people who will be coming to the conference. So that, and, but also, we also believe that with the achievements which the president has been scoring on the economic and socio-economic front, a smaller number of people will be much more focused in debating issues about our manifesto, in debating about the achievements which we have scored, but also in charting the future of even more successes by the Revolutionary Party. So we believe that this group is of the, this, the, this this, this delegate will be coming uh, for the time the optimal size which we would want so that we can carry out cogent debate on issues which matter to the day to day lives of the people of Zimbabwe. So we will be having our conference at the HICC, the International Arab International Conference Center, and there will be the theme will be. Building a prosperous Zimbabwe, leaving no one and no place behind. This is the theme of our conference this year. You saw our president in Matebelerent. He is delving into one of the most contentious issues of our post war independence, which is the Bukra Wundi. And he is doing it in a candid and forthright a manner as can be. It is taking it right to the grassroots level because people who may have been victims or who were <coughs> victims belong to families, they belong to villages, they belong to chiefs and headmen in those areas. These are the people who matter in the issue and these are the people who needs to be assuaged of any things which may have gone in that 
an epi episode in the evolution of the history of Zimbabwe. We have admitted mistakes are made. Countries never chart history in a linear manner, make mistakes, and sometimes they are very painful. I will tell you of a certain country which always wants to jump, to pump its chest about its democratic credentials, and it is called the United States of America. They had a terrible civil war soon after independence, the North versus the South, which almost killed a third of their population, if not more. In fact, historically, it was the worst war in history after that era, in terms of deaths and injuries. That's the American Civil War. So we, Zimbabwe, avoided the abyss of a civil war because of our wisdom. We went better than what America went through. So we do not shy away from our words if they are there. And the president has brought a new approach, a fresh, a refreshing breeze to the issue of Bukrawund. And it was there at State House this week when he met all the chiefs from Matibere on this issue, from the Midlands on this issue. I'm very grateful to those who wish well for this process, the chiefs themselves, Chief Jarubira and his team, apart from the chiefs who came from Matibere but we're also very grateful of well-meaning governments, even from Europe, particularly the Swiss government. This is a country which has been molded out of several nationalities of Europe. The Italians are Swiss, the French are Swiss, the Germans are Swiss, but they all share one flag and they are ardently patriotic because over the years they have seen that creed, religion, color, tribe, race, clan do not matter. And it is the Swiss experience which we value when we, are, we, when we cherish it as we deal with the Bukla on the issue. And we are very happy that the Swiss embassy and the Swiss government have come on board to make this process be as palliative as possible, be as healing as possible. This is an attestation, this is of our president's openness that a, a country with impeccable democratic credentials like Switzerland is taken in as a preferred partner. We all know that the EU and the Americans never had anything to do with post-traumatic distress of our war of independence. Up to today, they, touch, they won't touch anything to do with war veterans of Zimbabwe or the budget. They've done so in Namibia, they've done so in South Africa, but they've never done it with Zimbabwe because the umbrage about the defeat of the Rhodesian Cates Paul of the British Imperial Army is too deep from London, from Washington, and from the Western capitals. So they never would want to stretch a healing hand to the Zimbabwean post independent process, which is even deeper in terms of pain than the Gukra wound because it covered the whole population of this country. We have never had seen the EU or the, the Americans do anything about healing the wounds of Zimbabwe since independence. But they never stop hectoring and lecturing us about democracy, about this, about that. They are denialists of reparations, they are denialists of colonialism, they are denialists of racism, they are denialists of apartheid. You know, these people, they simply lack the candor and the honesty and the integrity which is being demonstrated by a country like Switzerland. So we are very happy and we want it duly acknowledged that Switzerland is doing a fantastic job. And after this event, we are very confident that all the people of Zimbabwe will unite even further. Like, you know, you know so that we together march forward as an integrated force to face the challenges of development and overcome all obstacles and deliver victories one after another. So this is uh, uh, the inclusive aspect of uh, the message
of our president, which has been born out by the team of the Congress, which is building a prosperous Zimbabwe, leaving no one and no place behind. And the prosperity is being demonstrated by what's going on in terms of investments. Never have been combined harvesters so busy trying to beat the October rains as they harvest wheat on a scale unprecedented in the history of modern Zimbabwe. Since the 60s, when wheat was introduced as a crop in Zimbabwe, we are expecting a bumper crop of wheat. I see people on television boasting of four to five tons per hectare. These are ordinary people of Zimbabwe who probably knew wheat as a bread in the supermarket. Now they are handling the grain in their fields. What a beauty which the Second Republic is delivering to the people of Zimbabwe. A golden beauty of cereals coming from their hard sweat and the government obliging by supplying combined harvesters in an agricultural program on a scale which has never been done before. This is but one aspect of the prosperity which the Second Republic has been delivering. It's the second crop, staple crop, after we did a similar thing with Mbuza and maize. And now we hear that even two legumes, so that we have a wholesome diet of protein and carbohydrates. Mbuza is being extended to legumes, so that we can also, people can produce, so that you know, there's abundance of food. This is the prospect, food security at national level, which spares us from being constantly hectored and lectured and around by NGOs which think it is their duty to feed the people of Zimbabwe. No, we are hard working, we feed ourselves. Just give us the opportunity and I'll be coming to Sanchez later. I'm just coming from Maputo. We are busy. We are busy, we've identified a new port south of Paira. This will be a deep water port with a railway line which will come through Chimani Mani Mountains, stretch the steel plant in Manizi. We are working with our Mozambican brothers so that that historical affinity between Zimbabwe and Mozambique is restored to shared prosperity. We can't continue to travel 2,000 kilometers to Deben for our exports. It's untenable. It's a fl inflation. So we are going to invest in new ports in Mozambique. This is the seriousness at which investment in Zimbabwe is being viewed by global players. Zimbabwe's assets in mining are exciting some of the top boardrooms of the whole world, the best ones. And not necessarily Americans. This could be Chinese. They are the top in the game. This could be Indians. They have become top in the game because we, with the shared prosperity, with the shared capital markets, it doesn't have to be New York alone. It doesn't have to be London alone. It doesn't have to be Paris alone. It could be Seoul, it could be Singapore, it could be Shanghai, it could be Mumbai, it could be Istanbul, it could be, you know, this is where we are going as a country. Attracting world-class capital to come and be applied into the Zimbabwe world-class resource base so that some of the best African minds in terms of education, and you heard the statistics from Zimstad, we still tops in terms of human, United Nations UNESCO interest index. They just came out recently. These are the minds which will be working on this capital from abroad and locally, on these resources which God gave us. All in all, for made in Zimbabwe goods, quality goods made in Zimbabwe for the global market. Who has made it possible? Emerson Nambuzo Munangago, Dr. Comrade, President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. In a short four years, he has turned the economy upside down in a way nobody ever thought. Even our currency is hardening. Those who used to peel for our currency, he has plugged the holes. You know, prior to his reforms, Vanuai and Abutsimi will not take Amburan and Baura. Zimbabwe 
This time he has plugged in all the holes of the AHT. So the money is staying in here. That's why the US dollar is beginning to become currency. Not because everybody is scrambling for it, but because everybody has got it available. Why? Because the hard work of Zimbabwe is no longer being purified. It's no longer being stolen by mobile money networks, which have billionaires who live in London when they don't even own a fish and chips shop there, when they are Zimbabweans. When we have a stock exchange which manipulates people's lives, now we have the Zimbabwe stock exchange, we have the Victoria Falls stock exchange in hard currency. When you want to trade, you don't manipulate the currency of the country. These are the reforms which are delivering the prosperity which is born by the theme which I have just announced to you. So we are doing well as a country and we are going to do even better after the conference. We are on course to deliver Africa's first prosperous middle income country. We have the capacity. We have the marriage between the resources, the natural resources of our country and the brains of our people. We have that marriage and we have a capital base which, is sustain, which can sustain that. And we have the friends who can help us achieve that. So this is where we are going. We had a wonderful occasion yesterday. You know, social media has been misleading, painting a bad picture of the relationship between the teaching profession, that noblest of professions, one which makes everybody of you be what you are, including myself, that noblest of profession. It was being said that it is anti-government. Oh, you should have been there yesterday in the Arabi International Conference Center. All the auditorium sectors filled to brim, to capacity. Uh, Some of you would have even been standing. They came from all over the country, voluntarily, uh, to come. Teachers are not coerced. <laughs> Teachers are not coercible. They are, they are neither coerced nor are they coercible. They came on their own volition to come and express themselves as teachers for economic development because they are simply impressed <coughs> by what the president is doing. They can see something which makes their job as teachers exciting because the young people they are teaching can look for a better life. Teachers produce a product. And they want that product to have a useful purpose in life. So the president has made them feel purposeful by making sure that there is promise for the graduates, graduates of their teaching, of their classrooms. And they came in their multitude to come and have communion with the man who is making their job so exciting. Now, I don't know where you stay takes it from because they cannot reconcile themselves that their message for so long was false that the teachers don't want to say okay. They put a line, a line that the teachers were, were forced to come in to be threatened. Ah, oh, come on. No, this is distance in journalism. And respect your teachers. They are not threatenable. You no, know, why do you next time you know news day you may need to go there to the to the teaching professions to their to their and they say why were you lying about us? Then you are chased away by those teachers because you lie about them because you don't want to report accurately. Please respect the teachers. You may not want our president. It's your free choice. But at least do what the teachers. They are not your enemies. And they are not aspiring for power to state house which your preferred candidate, Chamisa, is aspiring for. Teachers are not in competition with Chamisa. So why do you want to be made to, to speak ill about them? Please do respect them. Instead, they were all happy and the president was most touched. He's a man who has been in the game since he was 19 or so. From the inception of the, of the, of the guerrilla army when it was a fledgling uh, infant back in the 60s. Never has a man expressed so much emotion in front of such a big crowd, it was before him. It, he was drained of emotion because of the love which the teachers had shown him. And he was effusive in his praise for the teachers. Clearly, a compact has been struck between our president and the teachers. 
and the teachers do matter because they shape people's minds. They are natural political commissar. That's why we say to the MDs, to the triple C, don't be on the wrong side of the teachers. They are natural political commissars. You alienate from themselves, you are alienating from vote, from their vote. They are influential players in village politics. They are influential players in world politics in the country. They were here yesterday in the amount to, to have a shared communion with President Dr. Emerson Comrade Zambuzo Nagaba. That's what we felt so good about yesterday. Yes, we were having this wonderful occasion with our teachers. There is another government, the American government, which cannot countenance the prospect of good things in Zimbabwe. Just like people see the American government, they had a press conference. I was filled with angst listening to the press conference. Here is a country which is my alma mater. I've got three university graduate degrees from two American universities. I know how the Americans work hard for their country to be what it is. That's why they are top of the world. We have two unprepared diplomats coming for a press conference talking about sanctions. They haven't read their stuff. They haven't read even the act upon which they are administering the sanctions. They aren't bothered about the reports from the United Nations <laughs> organization, which has compiled a compendium condemning sanctions through a rapporteur and 